In the wild deserts of Scandinavia, recently there were joint military exercises of NATO countries and it was happening bang in the middle of Russia's military operation in Ukraine. Now these joint exercises featured about 30,000 troops from 27 member countries of NATO. But it also involved two countries that have been sitting on the fence, Finland and Sweden. This drill was planned long before the Russia-Ukraine situation, but the position of both Sweden and Finland joining NATO has been sharpened after this war began. This particular training mission was the brainchild of NATO member Norway, which is going out of its way to send a powerful message to Moscow. Ironically, this exercise was called Cold Response. The fact that it was happening in the middle of a hot war was not lost on Moscow. Sweden and Finland have long been integrated with the West, but they have traditionally been non-aligned countries. Neither country is a member of NATO. That leaves them standing uncomfortably outside the defense umbrella of NATO. That is exactly the same position Ukraine found itself in. On Crux Decode this week, is there a case for Sweden and Finland to join NATO. And if they attempt to do that, will they end up provoking Russia just like Ukraine did? The surging Russian threat is spurring a historic debate in both Sweden and Finland on the sudden risks of going slow on NATO membership. Now, both Swedes and Finns are watching aghast at the brutal Russian siege of Ukrainian cities. They're also closely observing the limited NATO military response to the war that's taking place in another non-NATO nation, much like themselves. Allied weapons are being sent over the border to Ukraine. And just like Sweden and Finland, Ukraine too is outside the fold of NATO, but it's very much in the focus of NATO. And the message being taken away, both in Stockholm and in Helsinki, is this, that NATO will not risk going to a nuclear war with Russian President Vladimir Putin, and that too for a non-NATO member. Now, the Swedes and the Finns have traditionally been very cautious. But since this war began, opinion polls in both countries are showing a majority are supporting joining NATO and a more aggressive defense posture against Russia. But that is also causing a great deal of turmoil for both the left-inclined governments in Sweden and Finland. The governments are skeptical of openly joining NATO and in the process, angering Putin. After all, the world has seen the wrath of Putin. Now, both Sweden and Finland have traditionally also been pacifist countries, not wanting to take a very aggressive defense posture. But today, the public in both those countries is forcing their respective governments to make defense the number one issue. And in response, Moscow has already warned both Sweden and Finland that there will be consequences. Dmitry Peskov, who's the spokesperson of the Kremlin, has said that Russia would have to rebalance its own priorities if Sweden and Finland were to join NATO. Already, they are among the closest non-member NATO states. The two countries are enhanced opportunity partners. Now, that is a category that also includes Ukraine. But they further strengthened their ties with NATO back in 2014 by signing a deal which basically allows NATO to operate on Swedish and Finnish soil if ever there was to be a conflict. NATO has already agreed to sharing intelligence on the Ukraine war with both Sweden and Finland. Moscow's warning of very serious military and political consequences is already having an impact. Last week, Finnish planes that were flying near the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad suffered mysterious interference in their GPS signals. Back in early March, Swedish officials denounced the violation of their Baltic Sea airspace by four Russian fighter jets. Now, both countries are nevertheless moving to respond to this new age of Russian aggression. Like other European countries, Sweden has also announced a big ramp up in its defense spending. Finland is also weighing similar action. Last week, in fact, there was a meeting of Finnish President Sauli Ninisto with President Joe Biden at the White House. In fact, the Swedish Prime Minister also attended that, that meeting virtually. 
Both the Finnish and Swedish leaders will also meet with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson very soon for a two-day summit along with their Northern European counterparts. But here's the catch-22 for both Sweden and Finland. They have been reminding the European Union that Europe should be more than just about trade and economics. In a joint letter to the EU, Finland and Sweden brought up Article 42, Clause 7 of the European Union's founding Lisbon Treaty, which obligates other members to aid and assist by all means available any EU country that comes under attack. But the fact is that the EU is not a military alliance. NATO is. And the EU lacks the power to use military force. In fact, the biggest military powers, whether it's the US, Britain, Turkey, they're not bound by the Lisbon Treaty. And no country in Europe wants to end up angering Russia by actively militarily supporting Finland and Sweden. Now, of these two countries, Finland, of course, shares a border with Russia. It's about 1,800 kilometers long. It is moving faster towards NATO membership than Sweden. Finland has long existed as a buffer state. It spent about 700 years as part of the Kingdom of Sweden before being wrenched away by the Russian Empire back in 1808. In fact, the Russian Imperial Army invaded Finland in that year, annexing it from the Kingdom of Sweden. For the next 100 plus years, Finland acted as an autonomous buffer state but was under the Russian Empire. After the Russian Revolution in 1917, most of the peripheral states were given the opportunity to become independent if a majority of their populations favoured such an arrangement. So what happened in Finland was that a majority of the Finnish population voted for independence and seceded away from the Russian Federation. Now, for a large part of World War II, Finland was under Soviet control. In 1948, the Soviet Union had a security pact with Finland whereby Helsinki promised to be a neutral state and not be antagonistic towards Russia. A stand which Helsinki stuck to throughout the duration of the Cold War. But the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 led to Finland moving towards the West. It joined the European Union in 1995, even as it refrained from the more provocative step of joining NATO. Sweden, on the other hand, has been a historically non-aligned country. It's opted to stay out of both the world wars. It appears to be on a much slower track to NATO membership if that were to happen at all. In fact, during the Cold War, Sweden did see Moscow as a threat. It did covertly cooperate with NATO, but there was never an attempt to join NATO formally. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, Sweden cut its military spending and joined the European Union, even as public opinion and political will remained against NATO membership. Now, despite a massive shift in public opinion in both Finland and Sweden, the left-leaning governments in both countries are not in a hurry to join NATO. But there is pressure on them, from opposition parties, from domestic vote banks. This may see a decisive shift on the question that the Swedes and the Finns so long have been tiptoeing around. Now, though, they no longer may have that luxury of kicking this question down the road.